So, welcome to today's class, Educational Test and Measurement, Lesson Number 3. Today, we shall be talking on this fine topic, Qualities of a Good Test. Well, it's a very short topic. We're not going to take much time, but the topic is equally very important. What is the goal? expected of us by the end of this class of course we expect that you should have acquired good understanding of the qualities expected of test and of course other measurement instruments let's take a look at the specific objectives of the class at the end of this class you should be able to one, mention the three basic qualities that every test item must possess. Two, you should be able to explain the concept of validity. You should be able to explain the concept of reliability. You should be able to describe what the concept of usability as a quality of a good test is. Let's begin. Of that the test we use can be classified and labeled by a wide array of criteria. We have discussed this in the previous class. So you can see tests being called names such as achievement test, you see test such as diagnostic, diagnostic test, and that test may be regarded as mental ability test. Other tests are called selection tests. We have tests people regard as psychological tests. So let's see a wide array of tests being labeled by different names. But one thing that runs across them is that basic assumption in the various tools of measurement. That assumption is that all of them are of good quality and that all of them provide us with information that are very dependable. So we want to ask, what then are the qualities that make a test to be good? That is what we're talking about today as quality of a good test. Let's start by talking about the basic quality of a good test. There are quite a number of qualities we're talking about, but we shall emphasize on three as a basic good test should provide the following qualities. What are they? Validity. Secondly, reliability. And of course, what is required as reliability. Let's start from the beginning. Validity. In a nutshell, validity can be regarded as the extent to which a test measures what it is intended measure. The test is designed to measure knowledge of mathematics and that test to a large extent measures that knowledge of mathematics that test is said to be reliable for a valid reliability is synonymous with consistency. Reliability, consistency, stable, dependability, trustworthiness, and the extent to which a particular test is consistent can produce reliable results, dependable results, results that can be trustworthy, that can be reproduced, then that test is said to have high level of reliability. Usability is another quality that every test must possess. In a way, how usable is this instrument test with respect to ease of administration? Ease of scoring, ease of interpretation of scores, reasonable cost of test and administration. But this, some regard them as administrative consideration because administrators are always more concerned about this aspect. Can we easily administer this test? Will it have difficulties for us in administration? How easy is it for us to do the scoring of the test? When we get this course, how easy is it for us to do the interpretation? And of course, the cost of testing and administration is 
available in a factor that has become under understanding. Once again, let us take the validity that has to do with the extent of stress measuring what it is intended to measure. We're going to take a look at this in subsequent classes. Reliability, the extent to which a particular test is consistent, stable, dependable, reproducible, or trustworthy in measuring what it is measuring. And usability has to do with administrative consideration with respect to how easy it is for us to administer the test, how easy it is for us to see the story, how easy it is for us to do the interpretation of scores, and of course, cost of test and administration, how reasonable it is. Let's look on more other qualities that a good test represents. Let us say that these other qualities we're talking about can be subsumed with the very basic quality, especially that of validity that we have scored, talked about earlier. Yes, a good test must possess the quality of discrimination. You hear me right. Discrimination. A good test must be able to make a clear distinction between those who know and those who do not know. We should be able to distinguish very clearly between the poor and good learners. If a good student is very good in mathematics, another student is not good in mathematics. And you give both of them a test in mathematics, that test should clearly discriminate, distinguish between the two of them. The good student should be able to get higher marks than the poor student. That will that test good test comprehensiveness. A good test must be comprehensive in the sense that it must cover much of the content of the subject matter that has been taught. If a test does that, yes, we say that test is a good test. If you teach 10 topics during the term, a good test that is meant to cover that topics you have taught for that term should contain as much as possible or most, if not all the topics. That means that test is good. Another quality expected of a good test is fairness. You may be wondering, we talk about discrimination and we're not talking about fairness. Are they not contradictory? No, not at all. When we talk about a test to be fair, what we mean is that that test, if it is administered to all examinees under uniform condition, all of them must be provided with that test without any discrimination. What we are saying is that the administration condition must be uniform. Not that the way in which the test is administered will be unjust, will discriminate for being people of one class or another. This is what we are saying. This test is administered in the morning, everybody should take it in the morning. The condition should be the same. The test must possess the quality of objectivity. The test is said to be objective if it is free from personal biases in interpreting its scope as well as exploring the response. We are saying that every test must be free from the subjective biases of who the bias matters in the test that is objective we should have nothing to do with the personal biases of the scorer. That is, if Mr. A does the scoring, we should be able to get the same thing if Mr. B does the scoring. These are the very vital qualities of the test. Let us recap what have been said today that every good test and of course every measurement tool, not just the classroom test, must be able to have some basic characteristics. What are these? Validity, reliability, usability, comprehensiveness, objectivity, discrimination, and fairness. Can you do this again? Let me pause. Give you just 30 seconds. Yes? Oh, good. You got it right. 
academic game. Validity, reliability, usability, these are the basic quality that every good test must have. And of course, the many ones subsumed on that validity, most likely comprehensiveness, objectivity, discrimination, and of course, fairness. We said these characteristics they are very important. Validity is the most important of them. The test is of no use. Measures, but it is not intended to measure. In our next lesson, we shall go a bit further by taking a consideration of the characteristics of a good question. Because we are talking about a test as what each test has questions in it. What are the basic characteristics of the test? We shall turn our attention to the quality of a good question that a teacher uses as a measuring device in achievement. Test. Please, this is what we are really going to pay attention on next week. Did you know that setting good questions is not as easy as it seems to be? Did you know that setting good questions requires basic knowledge skills and expertise let me inform you that we're going to have a class on how not to set a question but take a look at some of these teacher made questions there were questions that were taken from classroom teachers any problem with the following test items look at them let's start with number one who is the president of china number two where does the vice president of Nigeria come from? Number three, what do we do before we eat? Number four, what do we use to measure our body temperature? Five, should the president, president of Ghana increase the budgetary allocation to education? Number six, write a short note on the characteristics of living things. Number seven, in not less than a page, discuss the parts of the Number eight, the president of USA was born in the state of Dash. Well, at a glance, we may not see any problem with these questions. Well, see you in our next lesson when we shall discuss this. What are the problems? And of course, in our class on how not appreciate that we have to get acquire basic knowledge and skills when it comes to getting good questions that will form your test. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much as we shall see in our next lesson. See you next.